Let's get some music. What's going on, traders? Getting crushed. Tell me everything will be okay. What are you getting crushed in? I'm gonna be myself. Douglas Montgomery was out. No one stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. All right, let's pause the music. Let's pause the flow. So I was like, I want to. I don't know. I said, let me just start. I wanted to go live during the final hour of the market and just start watching this stuff as it closes and stuff like that. Um, and let's just talk. So I was looking at Tesla and man, so Tesla gapped up on earnings the other day and you can see, well, ah, you can barely see it. Let me pull out my drawing tool. So Tesla, anybody who was team Tesla 2000, the question is, can it still get there? Gapped up to one or that's 1680. You can see right there. And then Tesla just, bam, you know, I don't know what happened. So then today, again, today the 24th, right? This thing just gapped down, sold off. So I think it's just a lot of profit taking happening with Tesla. But it's just a reminder that nothing goes straight up and it's tough to hold over earnings when these stocks have had such a big run. Brian Simmons, what's up? What's up? Welcome to the party. Abe says, looking forward to hearing what I've been up to. Man, I just been up to teaching, coaching, trading. Uh, we had a baby, brand new baby boy. So baby boy Brown has been taking up a lot of our time as well. So Randy, you say you're getting crushed. Uh, uh, hold on, did you say you're getting crushed in Marvel? Let me see. Let me see. Enjoying. It. Come on, Marvel is what you said. Yeah, Marvel. Like some stuff. That's why you got to give it time. If you look at, I don't know. Let's take Netflix up out of here. Let's bring Marvel into the picture. Um, it's it's you know everything's kind of struggling right now, but nice recovery today. Let's pull up the bigger chart and just see what's. Do I got the bigger charts open? Hold on, let me pull up the bigger charts on one of these. So let's see, can I pull this all the way in the view? Boom, boom, Mar Marvell gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? If you really look at it, you put the moving averages on it, it's literally doing what we want it to do, sort of. It's pulling back to about the 50 day moving average. If it breaks there, then I'd be concerned. Other than that, I say you let, let the semi do what the semi's gonna do. Zoom out, big picture, long term. The trend is up, so I think we just we just gotta be patient. We just gotta be patient. So I don't think I you know I don't think there's much to panic about there. But let's go back to the closing bell. You got Tesla just ah uh, tanking. Boeing kind of hurt my feelings today because I had some weekly options and I literally had an opportunity to get out right here and I had an opportunity to get out right here snap some profit and basically this thing looks like a giant slide right that some kids want to 
Mm. That's the fun police saying the fun is over. The pool is closed and it closed at 1130. You see that? Ah, I should have been paying attention, but I got caught slipping, slipping. All right. Brian, welcome to the live stream. Richard Gary says, what's up? What's up, Richard Gary? We in the building. Walnut said, took a beating on earnings. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Tesla. Even though they actually squeaked out a profit for earnings, I'm not sure, you know, what happened. So we're looking at Boeing right now, but I think Boeing is going to be in this channel until they release earnings next week. Um, but even like Apple sold off recently. Let me bring up the big, the big charts again. If you look at Apple, APL, even Apple had a little bit of a pullback. And so... You got to be careful trying to catch them at the all time high. And typically these pullbacks are your opportunity to buy. If you look at Apple right here, pullback, that was the opportunity to buy, pullback. That was the opportunity to buy, pullback. That was the opportunity to buy, pullback, opportunity to buy. Pullback to the 50, more than likely going to be an opportunity to buy. We'll see what happens, but I think you can't go wrong long term um invest in the apple by the way thanks for all the congratulations charles hunter in the building jeremy lynn says what do i think of amd i actually don't think of amd <laughs> no um amd had a little bit of a pop because i believe it was intel so intel announced that i don't know what the intel announced something about they're having chip problems or something like that so intel just tanked right from 60 down to 50 nice 10 point drop so i guess the thought process is that if intel um i guess the thought process is if intel chips aren't working or whatever the case may be then that business is going to move over to amd and so when the first news hit it popped a little bit of a sell-off then today bam popped again i mean whoo I think you're chasing it if you buy right here, and especially if you're buying ahead of earnings on the 28th, which looks like that'll be what? Is that Monday? What if earnings are bad? Or what if earnings are good and they pull a Tesla? What if earnings are good and they pull a Tesla, right? So it's like everybody was excited, gapped up, sold off, today gapped down. So you have to be careful trying to run in ahead of earnings, especially when the stock's making this big of a move pre-market. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Uh, Deborah Reed. What's up, Deborah Reed? New to options. What are your thoughts on the XLK? Deborah, you should join our private Facebook group because we just broke down the XLK. If you're not familiar with that, let me see. Let me see. TheBrownReport.com forward slash group. We just talked about this. I went live inside of our private Facebook group. Go to thebrownreport.com forward slash group. Click to join. Get inside our group. But since you're here on YouTube, and I love YouTube, let's talk about the XLK. So what I shared in the group with the XLK is long-term trend of the XLK is where? It's up. But, but you got these zags, right? So let me pull out the zags. There's a zag. Matter of fact, let me go back even further. Go back even further. You can really see it. Okay. So about to here, you can really see it. So you got these opportunities to get out on these zags. So right now we're at a potential zag standpoint. So I don't know that I would be jumping into the XLK bullish. Cause if you zoom in, you can see the XLK, I mean, it's had a hell of a run, right? I mean, tech stocks have been on the tear, but at what point are they overvalued? Are you chasing? Um, I think nah, we got to pull back close to the 50-day moving average, but it's Friday. Do you really want to jump into it on a Friday? I'd wait, see if we get a bounce off the 50. I'd love to see it break, come to the 90 to 200, and then take a position, but I don't know. That'd be a gift from the trade and gods. But I like it. I like tech long term. When you think about what's going on with the pandemic, 
tech is what's going to get us out of this because everybody's working from home. Everybody's live streaming. Everybody is in the cloud. And so what does that mean? They need more computers, more internet, more bandwidth, more micro trips, more semiconductors. So that is why tech, my friend, Deborah is on a tear. Charles, we just talked about Boeing, man. Boeing, you know, it disappointed me today. Um, you could see, hold on, let me bring the, the, the intraday charts back up. So here's Boeing. I had some weeklies on Boeing that I should have closed out right here or right here. I don't know what I was smoking today. I'm like, it can go higher. You never risk it on a Friday. That's expiration. Here's why I was a little upset with myself. If you zoom out, what does Boeing do every day for the last at least five days? It gaps up, sells off. Gaps up at the open, does what? Sells off. Gaps up at the open the next day, sells off. What did it do? Runs up, sells off. What did it do today? Ran up, sells off. There's the pattern. I don't know why. If, 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 I don't know. I, maybe I was asleep at the wheel. I needed a good loss to wake me up. Um, if I was just aware, like I normally am, I think I'm over trading or hyper trading. I really should have closed out the trade up here and then just went bearish. Why? Because it does this every day. This is a, I could day trade this every day. Trade the gap up, sell it, go bearish. Trade the gap up, sell it, go bearish. Not today though. I didn't do it today and it came back to bite me, but ah, it's all good. Douglas says Doku look like it's ready to pop. I think Doku's look like it's ready to flop. Let's take a look at it. Where is my, I like Doku. I do like Doku, DocuSign, but no, no, I think, I don't, I don't trust it here. Look at this. You got a top. Okay, so look, boom, ran up, hit his head, boom. Guess what it did again? Ran up, hit his head twice, sold off, sold off today. I'd love to see a nice pull back to the 50. And then I'd be comfortable buying. And when you say pop, I don't know. Do you mean Bollinger Band? So it's because to me, I don't see a tight volatility squeeze here. So, and it broke the middle band. Moving average broke the 10, sitting at the 20. I don't know that I'm a believer right now in this. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to pass for right now. I think the market's rolling over, to be honest with you. So I think patience is the key here. Patience is the key. And we're just watching Boeing bleed out in the final hour here. Um, Let's see. <laughs> Charles says, glad I slept and kept Twitter. Uh-oh, what is, what is Twitter doing? What is, tw is Twitter balling? Let's look at the TWTR. Ah, it's doing all right, but look at that sell-off yesterday. I mean, that that doesn't feel as great. Did they did they announce earnings? Oh yeah, they announced earnings. Okay, so they had a pop and a little bit of a sell-off, but uh, it's kind of right back to where it was pre-earnings. So hmm, it's all right. Um, Microsoft. I was I was not in Microsoft, uh, Charles. So I I didn't do anything with Microsoft. Reggie P said, how am I feeling about Lyft? Look, here's my thoughts on Lyft, Reggie P. Um, you either got to take a small loss. I don't like today's recovery on Lyft. So Lyft sold off big, but if you look at it, I think Lyft, so Lyft ran up. It's hitting his head on the 20 and starting to roll. I would have liked to see it close down today near the bottom. But if I bring this back up and I bring Lyft into the equation, Lyft, unfortunately, unfortunately, it sold off. But then I don't like the fact that Lyft ran back up. I'm like, come on. So for all our members who are in this bearish, I like that it was selling off. But now it's it rebounded, but it's still down 40 something cent today. But I would have liked to see it sold off and stayed down. I didn't, I didn't like the recovery, so to speak. So that kind of sucks. We'll have to see what it does tomorrow. But if you look at a big picture, it's still failing right around the 20. 
It looks like it wants to roll over. I don't know that I see it popping before earnings. Um, so the question is, can this sell off before earnings right here on August 20th? I think so. I don't know why I would go bullish, but stranger things have happened. We got one minute for the market close, not even one minute, like four seconds. Deborah Risa did a call on the XLK for January 21st, 2022. Well, I don't know if it was a good call or not, because I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. Are you investing in, 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 in the XLK or are you trading it? If you're trading it, I think, I think a pullback to the 50 is well deserved. But when you talk about 2022, then you got to come back out and look at like the year chart. So from 2019 to 2020, look how much it ran up. And from 2020, even with the drop we had due to COVID and China trade war, look at where it's at. So I think if you're willing to hold it that long, I think you're going to be okay, Deborah. A, A, B, A, B says, what does gap up mean? Come on, A, B, you got to get in one of my courses or something, man. What does a gap up mean? Let me go to Tesla. Maybe I can show you what a gap up or a gap down. So there's a gap, A, B. A, B. I don't know why that name just sounds funny to me, but hold on. Let me see if I can zoom it. Come on. Come on. Zoom. Okay. It's hard to zoom on that one. Let me switch software to this web-based software. Okay. Let me, uh, Tesla, let me show you what a gap up or a gap down is. So this is a gap, All right. You can see clearly right here that it closed one price. It closed right there right? And then it opened right here. That's a gap. So all this space in the middle from here to here is called a gap. Actually, it gapped down. So this is where it closed. This is where it opened. So this was the gap. Everything in between these two red lines is the gap. So it gapped down or like right here, this is where it closed. And then this is where it opened. So everything in between here is the gap right? So it just gapped. It opened up higher. Um, so there you go. A B. Um, thanks for the congrats on the baby for sure. Um, so on one of your videos, you stated you make one or two trades a month. Did that change recently? Sometimes I've been day trading lately and just kind of getting into where the momentum is at. So sometimes I switch up my stuff. I don't know. That's always good, but you know, it's all, it's all good. Eli, what about XSPA? I don't even know what that is. The Expa? What the heck is the Expa? Express Group? No, 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 no. If you look at this, where's the... Okay, the further I go back, the horrible it looks. Why? Because it's like... You know what we call this? We call this the penalty box. Okay, I don't... I don't I'm not interested in stocks in the penny box, number one. Number two, it's under $5, so it's a penny stock. Not really my thing, you know? Penny stocks typically suck, man. So, eh. Dave Ramsey. What does Dave Ramsey say? Dave Ramsey says 70% of day traders lose money. Do you agree? I don't know. I never interviewed 78% of the day traders. Um, but who cares what the 78% do? You just want to figure out how to be part of the 22%. That's really all that matters, right? I mean, Dave Ramsey is a big spiritual guy, but 50% of he's all about marriage, but 50% of marriage is in the divorce. Should people not get married? <laughs> right? That's a pretty high statistic too. So you just really want to figure out how to be the 50% that don't get divorced. Same with the stock market. You really just want to figure out how to be part of the crew that is part of the 22% that's winning. I think that's what's most important. JD Lex. All right. Douglas Montgomery said, I'm waiting on Doku. I would wait for that bad boy to pull it back. I'm not a, you know, we just talked about that. Jimmy Robinson. I need my Tesla stock to go back up. Please, Jimmy, please, please. Let me sound the horn. Make sure Jimmy's awake and listening. Don't tell me you bought Tesla pre-earnings and when it gapped up, so they had earnings here, 
Tesla gapped up. Please don't tell me. Here, let me bring it up on a different chart. Please don't tell me you were in it when it gapped up and then you held and got greedy. Please don't tell me that happened to you. It happens to the best of us, so don't worry about it. But please don't tell me you were in it when this thing, bam, opened up here and you held it all the way down here and then you held it today all the way down here. I think if you got enough time, Tesla goes to 2000. We can have that discussion another day. I think Tesla goes higher long term. So it depends on how long of an option you have or if you have the stock, I think you'll probably be okay. Brian says, Jason, what options do you have right now? No, 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 no. Uh, I had some weeklies on Boeing that expired today. I got some long-term stuff on Boeing. Um, other than that, I don't really have much going on, but I usually give out all my trades inside of Power Trades University. But um, no, they're usually not 30 days unless I'm day trading. Then I do weeklies, stuff like that. Kerry Packer. Am I saying that name right? Kerry Packer. All right. Kerry Packer says, what about Nikola, which is the, I think the competitor to Tesla? Um, I would probably argue they haven't sold anything yet. I think they just got a concept. And so you can see what the market thinks about their concept. 90 to 70 to 40 to 30. All these people who bought and didn't sell and held and they're watching it come all the way back down. That's why you can't be greedy. I wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole, especially not before earnings. You're so close to earnings happening next month. I wouldn't touch it. Could you short it? Probably. I don't know. Let's see. What are the options going for if we were to short this one? Um, here, let's bring Street Smart. Ah, hold on. Let's bring Street Smart down here. <gasps> oh, hold on. Too much. Too much visuals. All right, let's go to the demo account. All right, let's look at the option chain on Nikola. NKLA. All right, boom. So you got, as far as the options go on this thing, I guess you probably could short it. Let's see. Uh, that ends today. So we're not looking at that one. 821. Um, I don't know. You could short it. I don't know. This is expensive though. For 21 days for a stock that could fall from what? 29 down to 20 so it could fall at nine bucks i mean because you can see it's probably where you'll find support somewhere around 20 but i wish these options ah, too many windows open i wish these options were cheaper on it okay so i, I don't know you could pay 10 bucks only get a dollar 96 in time and if it falls nine bucks you're gonna make um it's 0.70 delta. Dang, I thought it'd be higher than that. But that's still not bad. If I was going to short it, that's what it would be. But that's my thoughts on Nicola. Very true. Focus on you, not others. AMD had a gap up too. Yeah. What do I think about NIAO? Mm, I don't know. What is NIAO? Um. All right. I need to organize my layout here so I can have charts and stuff like laid out right by me all right n-i-a-o i like to bring this down so i can have access to my street smart i don't see oh n-i-o huh nice run up pull back i'd have to find out what they do c-b-o-e b-z-x um not sure what is NIO. Let's see. What do they do? Dang, it's getting hot in here. What is the NIO? This is China's 
It's a holding company which engages in the design and manufacturing set of electric vehicles. Oh, another electric vehicle company. Um, I don't know enough about what they do. You know, all I know is they had a nice pop, but now they're selling off. If I was going to trade this, I guess I would look at this and say this level is support. I'd probably look at it like that and say that level of support and boom see if we get a bounce right off here possibly to go bullish but i don't know enough about what they do if i'm just playing the charts that's you know that's what i'm going to be thinking if i'm just playing the chart on the nil uh greg said it should be back up soon just considering it was just announced that elon is planning on building a super factory in the u.s talking about tesla still um yeah probably Revivian is Tesla's competitor. You know, it's funny to call somebody their competitor when Tesla's at like $1,700 a share and you've never heard of the other company. You're like, oh, okay. So yeah, Carrie was saying NIO is an electric vehicle company. I say stick with the best or try to, all right. So, or try to get with like the companies that make batteries. So like First Solar, for example, um, I believe first solar, oh no, solar city is owned by Tesla, but I would look at some of the solar companies and some of the electric battery manufacturers um, to see if you can play that angle versus picking who has the best car. They're all going to need electric batteries. They're all going to need, um, what's the stuff? Nickel metal hydrate, I think that goes into these batteries. So I would probably try to play it that way instead of trying to figure out who has, did I just switch screens? I did instead of trying to figure out who has the best, um, battery. So that's, that's, that's what I would, that's what I would consider. Ken Carter says, Jason, I'm enjoying your course. Very informative. Y'all get the course. You won't be disappointed. There it is. Testimony from Mr. Ken Carter himself. CS says, what about FLR or infrastructure? Let's see who's FLR. Flower Corp. I don't like it. I don't like it. Look at the look at the trend. If if I know nothing else about this company and I just looked at the chart, boom, boom, boom. Like, why would I be down with the Flower Corp? You see what I'm saying? If I knew nothing else about the company, so I, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling Flower Corp, my man's. So, uh. Ricardo or Ricciano, I don't know if I'm saying that right, says um, Iron Condor on XLK. Ooh, that's too much for me to get into right now. Iron Condor. Most people probably don't even know what an Iron Condor is. So I'm going to pass on even bringing up what a Condor is or even getting into that. That's like post that in the form if you're in our form. But that's like I think it's too much, too much. Um to me, most people can't handle that right now. <laughs> Iron Condor, you're doing too much. Let me see here. What else? Deborah, Deborah says, love the content question. What's your biggest loss and what have you learned from it? Gosh, I don't know what my biggest loss was. I would probably say my biggest loss, probably somewhere around 200,000 probably. I think, I think my biggest loss is like 200,000. Um, what did I learn from it? I learned that as long as you got your health <laughs> and your mind that you can survive anything and that it's just money, you'll come back from it. So I learned that now I can lose up to $300,000 before I panic because losing $200,000 just doesn't bother me anymore. That's kind of like a weekly thing. It's up 200, down 200 sometimes. So, you know, that's what I learned from it, is that money comes and goes. As long as you got your health, you'll be okay. And that, you know, this is something I plan to do long term. So don't let a little, you know, loss knock you out of the box. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also learn that you can make the money back. I think the other week I had lost 200, made 200, lost 200, made it back. I mean, it was, it was just a whirlwind, you know? So, you know, I wouldn't, that's, that was my lesson. I guess that's, that's the lesson. 
Charles Hunter says, uh, jump into the course in the community are the bomb best earning year to date rolling with power trades. That's what I'm talking about. Like to hear, like to hear. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what are the thoughts, questions, comments you guys got here? Let's, let's roll some music while we wait for some new comments to come in. If I had the chance, I probably and then I got to check something on the YouTube channel. To, I could let it be. I could do what I want, but it's just an illusion, illusion. Yeah, I sometimes feel like I can go on. I'm drinking beer right out my coffee cup. I'm so yeah, we're just we were just grooving, watching the closing bell. Um, then I just got to check something, so I'm playing some music for a short intermission. Mm, but if you got questions, comments, post them below. We're gonna come right back. Let's see here. We got uh, TMT says I'm looking for construction materials and infrastructure and monuments. I'm not sure what you're. Are you just looking for that? Stocks to buy or what? I'm not sure if I understand what you're. Maybe that's just a comment. Uh, okay, I think we're back. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see here. Abe says, "Do you still do you still call trading big on a few days power trading?" I'm not, can you rephrase that? Do you still call trading big on a few days? Um, oh, like you mean if a stock moves in a few days? Power trading is more about putting a lot of power or money behind a setup that you feel good about. So that's really what power trading is about. It's not necessarily about the stock. It is about the stock moving, but it's about putting a lot of power or money um, behind that trade or behind that move. Deborah says, what are some good books to help learn about options? Deborah, I don't do books, my girl. Come on now. Books. If you know me, I am not a big fan of books. Now somebody tried to play me. It was like, he don't like books. Ha ha ha. Like don't, don't, don't play me. Here's what I mean, Deborah, by, um, books. I'm not a big fan. I'm more of a fan of courses because, when you try to read a book on options and you don't know exactly what it's about, it's like you're reading Greek or it's like you're reading a foreign language. So now you need a book to explain what the book said to the book. So I would prefer courses, but here's what I want you to do. Um, we have something called the options. If you're new to trading options, right? You come to brownreport.com, click here, get an introduction to options trading. You can get my options trading guide. Matter of fact, I think I can put that up here on the screen for a second. Hold on. Let me see here. The options trading guide. Where are you at? It is boom right there, right there. Pow. I created that graphic because I knew we would need it. So you can grab the options trading guide and we make that available for you at stockoptionstarterpack.com. It's going to give you a good introduction to options, how they work, and it's free. So I would recommend getting started th Ooh, excuse me, there if you want to check out options versus um, you know, going to buy a book. And then after that, I totally would recommend the course. Whether it's my course or somebody else's, obviously I'd love to have you. But I recommend courses, period. doesn't have to be mine, but anybody that's showing you visually, explaining, walking you through what it looks like versus you reading it on the page and there's no there's no in-depth explanation. You're still left up to interpretation. So those are my thoughts on uh, books. Deborah Reed. Um, so Abe said, I can't remember in the videos you said the name of the type of trader you are. So I, I call my style of trading power trading. You can call it swing trading. Uh, I call it power trading. So you're not necessarily watching the market every day. You're waiting for these 
precise setups and then you put a lot of power or money behind it. So I call that power trading. Um, it's our own term that we coined, uh, which is why our course is called Power Trades University. Hydro Cuz says, what are some ways to tell if an option is priced too high? I don't know. With a name like Hydro, do you smoke Hydro? Is that what you want to know about stuff getting high? No, I'm just I'm just messing with you. So let's go back to the screen share Hydro. Um, how can you tell if something is getting too high? So there's a couple different ways. Number one is, is it getting too high fundamentally? So you're going to have to do some fundamental research to find out if it's getting too high. So that's number one. Number two, you can look at the chart. So for example, uh, let's see if I can give you a good example. Let's look at Apple. Apple might not be a good one. Um, let's look at, let's look at Shopify. Mm, see, these are all trending. So not necessarily good to, I'm trying to find something that's like, gave a W pattern or something. Um, but, but basically, if you're looking at the chart, I'm trying to find a good one, but things have been, okay, let me give EMPH. This is a good one. We've been trading this one for a while. So here's a good example. If you look, you can see if I snap the line straight across here, roughly when the stock gets around this level, it starts to sell off, right? So for whatever reason, the market feels like it's undervalued. So just from a technical standpoint, when we're looking at this, we're like, okay, so next time it gets about right here, I'm looking to sell and take my money. Even though, well, actually, let me erase that. Once it gets about right here, you're looking to sell and take your money. Now, here's where people get in trouble. Greedy people say, I think it can go higher. Yes, it did go higher. But what inevitably or ultimately ended up happening? Stock sold right back off, right? And so then it ran back up again, got around this area. You should be taking profits again. Why? Because it started to sell off a little bit. Now, could it go higher at some point? It probably will. But that's just a quick and dirty way. If you know how to read stock charts and determine support, resistance, different things like that, there's going to be good areas to know whether the stock is getting overvalued or not. So Hydro, let me know if that helped, if it helped hit the emoji button give this video a thumbs up a like make it rain with some hearts do something to let me know that helps everybody can do it <laughs> you know um let's see here all right abe says do you uh only trade like for tech do i only trade no i don't only trade i'm not sure like i there's a video i did called my eight streams of income so i have eight other streams of income you can go watch that um but i do have multiple businesses i trade as a business etc power trades university which is a university where i sell courses coach teach people is a business so i have several um businesses so i hope that helped jd glex i hope i'm saying it right jd glex or is it just like glex and the jd is silent says i noticed some of the stocks swing eight dollars each day like for tonight ftnt when would you day trade versus holding long term? Um, first, I got to be in the mood to day trade. Second, the option prices have to be reasonable or I have to see an opportunity to take advantage of the option prices. And then I would day trade um, long term. It's more so like, you know, like Boeing, I, for example, I think airplanes are going to airplanes are not going to be replaced. So to me, I know that at some point Boeing and people will fly again and people will need airplanes. Might not be this year, may take a little bit of time next year, but we will need airplanes again at some point. And so I like something like this, I would go long term on because eventually it's not like the airplanes getting replaced by a car that can fly. That would be a major change in the game. But until then, We'll need planes again. So something like that, I would go long term on. But if I see some opportunity to day trade, I might. Eric Rios says, how do you look for your stocks? Do you use a scanner? Man, I have so many scans, Eric Rios. Let me see if I can uh, let me see if I can bring it up for you. I got so many scanners um, that I use. I mean, there is no one criteria. So let me bring it up while that's waiting to come up let me take the next question jg says how do you jg says 
how do you walk through trading as a career with your partner? Mine gets a little nervous, which throws um, off my game sometimes. How do I manage this? So I think the first thing that's important is for your partner to understand it's important to you, right? So if your partner understands that it's important to you, then they're going to want to support you. That's number one. Number two is your partner has probably seen all the dumb things you did in life. You know what I'm saying? Like when I told my mother, like, I want to be a millionaire, all she saw was her baby that poops in his diaper cross. All she saw was when I was in the gang, when I got kicked out of school, when I, you know, had my first job at McDonald's. She didn't see a millionaire in her baby boy. You know what I'm saying? So, I want to be a full-time stock trader, investor, and teach people. She's like, ah, yeah, no, right? So I'm saying that to say your wife may not, she might have seen you as a janitor. Nothing wrong with a janitor, but I'm just trying to use a job. She might see you as like, oh, you just work a janitor. Now you want to be an investor. And so what it is going to take is time and effort to change her perspective of you as a man, as a trader, as an investor. And the more she sees you take it serious, the more she'll start to take you serious. The more she sees you studying, practicing, looking at your charts, dabbling. Um, you know, maybe you take a trade, show her a win. Like we just made a thousand dollars. Look, Right. So the more you can change her perception of you from just being her husband that works as a custodian or whatever you do to like, OK, maybe my husband is a trader or an investor. Maybe he is serious. And once you realize it's not going away, I think she will start to support you in the way that you need to support. But it would be no difference if um, let's just say your wife is obese. I'm just using this example. Nothing against obese people. OK, don't, if you're obese, don't be ragging me in the comments. All right. But let's just say you were obese, 200 pounds overweight, and then your wife came to you and said, I'm going to be a personal trainer. You're kind of like, ah, I just saw you eating the donuts yesterday, like, and the extra ice cream, and like, now you're a personal trainer today? So you might not necessarily be feeling your wife as a personal trainer, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But as she slowly stops eating the donuts, stops eating the ice cream, she starts working out. She started taking some courses about the body, metabolism, what certain foods do. You start to be like, okay, maybe my wife is a trainer. You know what I'm saying? So um, I would think about it, you know, like that. <laughs> I, hope, I hope that helps. So I remember the original question while I was waiting on my charts, like how do I find trades? How do I screen stuff? Listen, I write my own custom scans. Okay. So Number one, you can buy software. You can rent software. I think there's free software. Free only gets you so far. Even buying the software only gets you so far because then they only give you so many preloaded scans and then you have to write your own scans or they sell scans and you have to buy the scans. So either way, you either got to learn how to write or learn how to buy. All right, but let me just go here and show you. All right, so I don't even know if you can see this. Let me see, can I pop it out? So. I don't want to pop it out. I don't like it popped out. Let me just make it bigger like this. So I got all these different scans. So I got a scan for Bollinger Band Breakout. I got a scan for, I mean, gosh, there's a bunch of scans. I got Momentum Low Price, Momentum on the NASDAQ, S&P, Russell. I can come here and find basically whatever I want. Stocks that had a 30% moving volume and closed between $5 and $100. Stocks that's closed up five days in a row. I mean, there's no limit to scans I write. I write different things to say, okay, what has this meant in the past? If I can find stocks where the 10 day is crossing the 200 day moving average, I might can spot um, a trend or something happening. So, I mean, there's, there's all kind of scans in here that, I mean, gosh, this thing goes forever. So when you say, how do I find my trades? Do I have scans? Like, absolutely. And I use multiple softwares. Sometimes I bounce between, um, different softwares, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that's my answer to that. <laughs> so, Abe, are you becoming more conservative with the volatility in the market and talks of another crash coming soon? Ah, you know, if a crash comes, we can try to put options. So you just got to be prepared to swing or do whatever the market, um, throws at you. Deb Reed. Can I call you Deb? Can I call you Deb? 
I know it's Deborah, but can I call you Deb? Because I feel like we're here when I say Deb. How many contracts would you be recommended to see a good profit? I when I started out, I like to buy contracts in lots of 10. So if I can buy 10 contracts at a time, I think that's a good place to be. So I like buying 10 contracts. Now, where I'm at, I don't know if it's good or bad. I mean, I like buying 100 contracts. And sometimes that makes my account swing big up and down and I need to chill out. But I like buying contracts now in like 50 lots or 100 lots. But a good place to be is if you can buy contracts in tens. That'd be great. So if an option contract is going for $9 and you buy 10, it's going to cost you about $9,000, right? So it's a good place to be. But, you know, if you can't do 10, five is a good number to start at. But I like buying them at 10. Um, and then a good profit is, you said, in the see a good profit right? What define a good profit, right? To a person who has a thousand dollars, if they make 500, that's a good profit to a person who makes 10, who has $10,000 in their account and they make 500. It's like, eh. so you have, you know, a good profit is sub is circumstantial or what's the word I'm looking for? Subjective. My English teacher would be proud of me. Um, it's subjective. It's subjective. What is a good profit? But I like to I like to um, I like to do like ten contracts. My girl Deb said I can call her Deb. We fight. We family now. Nah. That's what's up. <laughs> oh shoot! All right. So man, I don't know. It's getting hot in this room. I don't. Can y'all see the sweat beads beading off my face? It's getting hot in here. So I'm gonna hit some tunes up. I'm going to take us out. No, on the real. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll probably do some more of these. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. What it, here it is. Hold on. There it is. Boom. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Right? Hold on. Where's the... Is there a bell? There's a bell somewhere. There it is. Like, share, comment, all that good stuff. No, seriously, though. Subscribe. Hit the bell. So you can get notified when we go live. It's Friday. The market is closed. And um, it's time to go cut the grass, get a drink, maybe order some wing stop. I don't know. I'm finna just relax for the day. So hope y'all enjoyed it. Hanging out with your boy for an hour. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. I'll see you guys soon. Peace, everybody.